welcome back guys so now let's start with pathophysiology of the systemic blood circulation okay so let's look at question number 105 over here <coughs> so in this patient what they are saying is that the patient is a uh, patient had myocardial infarction okay and we already know what is myocardial infarction yes it is also called as heart attack and uh, this is actually uh, the complication of the angina right <coughs> mainly the unstable angina can further convert into myocardial infarction and further if you will look at that uh, 1.5 months later 1.5 months later Dressler syndrome Dressler syndrome appeared with characteristic triad yes we know about the triad of the Dressler syndrome that is uh, pericarditis pleurisy and the uh, pneumonia okay so first of all uh, this is also called as uh, post MI syndrome so Dressler syndrome is post MI which is after the heart attack uh, many of the patient is having the Dressler syndrome characterized by the uh, particular triad that is having uh, three things which is pericarditis pleurisy and pneumonia right and uh, this Dressler syndrome is actually autoimmune right this Dressler syndrome is autoimmune which is uh, also the post MI right so answer is quite clear over here they are saying about the autoimmune lien right so uh, this is the autoimmune disease okay now let's look over the next question <coughs> 106 over here so <coughs> ECG of a particular uh, patient uh, with idiopathic hypertension so this patient is having idiopathic hypertension which is not having any cause right idiopathic hypertension idiopathic means without any cause so we don't know about the cause of their hypertension but look at the ECG signs over here the sinus rhythm and the PQ interval is 0.19 second okay so if you talk about the PQ interval PQ interval is actually <coughs> okay if you talk about the PQ interval PQ uh, interval normal PQ interval I am saying so normal PQ interval if you will say or PR interval this is actually the range is 0.12 to 0.2 second right so this is the normal range of the PQ interval which you need to remember right further if you will see this question further they are saying that QRS com <coughs> complex is not changed look at this QRS complex is not changed disorder of what function of the <coughs> myocardium takes place over here okay so 0.1 to 0.2 second and PQ interval is almost approaching the normal range which is the highest uh, you can say permissible normal range of the PQ interval okay so in that case automaticity auto what is automaticity automaticity is uh, the part where the uh, you know any kind of ectopic uh, uh, signaling can be actually start or can be generated in the heart okay so let's say uh, there can be ectopic uh, impulses can be start from the ventricle side can be start from any point in the atrium so usually what happens physiologically is that SA node should fire at the rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute okay but if the PQ interval is actually exceeding the, its normal range in that case automaticity can be uh, might be disturbed okay or <coughs> so in this case pq interval is 0.19 second qrs complex is not changed till now till now the situation should be uh, in control but yes we are having the chance of the disturbance of the automaticity and in this question they are saying not automaticity but automatism is given over here okay uh, one more thing you should remember about the <coughs> C option which is given over here that is excitability excitability uh, <coughs> will be disturbed uh, usually it gets disturbed in cases of uh, arrhythmia usually it gets disturbed in cases of arrhythmia so uh, that, is, that is about the uh, excitability okay and if you talk about the <coughs> uh, conductivity conductivity actually uh, this actually happens this disturbance of the conductivity actually happens when uh, uh, there is a disturbance between the atria and the ventricle so i can say that av okay av nodal disturbance i can say av nodal disturbance uh, might lead to the conductivity problem okay for example the third degree block third degree av block which i can say okay so that can be the conductivity example right so let's move on to the next one 
दैट इज़ वन नॉट सेवन ओके सो वन नॉट सेवन अ पेशेंट हेड इसकीमिक हार्ट डिजीज कॉज बाय द कॉरनरी आर्टरी एथेरोस्कलोरोसिस यस सो दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द कॉरनरी आर्टरी एथेरोस्कलोरोसिस ही वॉज हैविंग द इस पेशेंट वॉज हैविंग स्कीमिक डिजीज एंड कॉरनरी आर्टरी एथेरोस्कलोरोसिस एथेरोस्कलोसिस प्लैक यू नो दैट इट इज इट कैन बी मेड अप ऑफ बाय द बाय द कोलेस्ट्रॉल और एल डी एल लो डेंसिटी प्रोटीन विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज बैड कोलेस्ट्रॉल थ्रोम्बोसिस ऑफ द फ्रंटल यस थ्रोम्बोसिस इज हैपनिंग ऑफ द फ्रंटल इंटर इंटर वेंट्रिकुलर आर्टरी आफ्टर द कोरोनोग्राफी फॉर द इनिशियल मैकेनिज्म दे आर आस्किंग यू राइट सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द इनिशियल मैकेनिज्म सो द अमंग दीज ऑप्शन वॉट कैन बी द आंसर ओ ही इफ यू नो अबाउट द कोरोनोग्राफी ओके सो दे वर मैंशनिंग अबाउट द कोरोनोग्राफी ओ ही कोरोनोग्राफी इज एक्चुअली वी आर चेकिंग द ब्लॉकेज इन विच काइंड ऑफ आर्टरी और इन विच काइंड ब्लड वेसल देर इज अ ब्लॉकेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल अथरस्कलोस इज हैपनिंग इन विच पर्टिकुलर वेसल राइट सो ओवर ही वॉट कैन बी द आंसर सो लुक एट द ए ऑप्शन इंक्रीज लेवल ऑफ कोगुलेंट्स नो इट्स नॉट फिटिंग ओवर ही रिटार्डेशन ऑफ द ब्लड फ्लो लुक एट अदर ऑप्शन येस सो वन ऑफ द ऑप्शन इज ओवर ही दैट इज द डैमेज ऑफ द एंडोथीलियम ओके सो लुक एट दिस ऑप्शन डैमेज ऑफ द एंडोथीलियम ऑफ द वेस्कुलर वॉल राइट damage of the endothelium of the vascular wall that can be the answer because uh, we know that uh, you know coronography means we are going to check over the blood vessel and the innermost layer of the blood vessel uh, uh, and the it is actually covering by the endothelium right so damage of the vessel endothelium of the vascular wall uh, <clears throat> can be there right because atherosclerosis was happening over there right so look at the question number 108 now the next one uh, <clears throat> this patient uh, actually complaining of dyspnea and dyspnea we know it is also the shortness of breath right dyspnea is what dyspnea is actually shortness of breath okay so dyspnea is you can say sob i am writing over here dyspnea is shortness of breath over here during exercise okay and uh, edema of the legs edema of the legs they are saying she has been ill for <coughs> two years that's fine now look there are frequent anginas in history and what they are saying what is the diagnosis circulatory insufficiency is the diagnosis in this particular case Cir circulatory in insufficiency i can say over here that circulatory insuff insufficiency you can write it as cardiac insufficiency right because uh, look uh, these kind of signs are looking like they are suggesting uh, that this patient might be having the right sided heart failure why i am saying this because look Uh, in this patient there is a edema of the legs and edema of this legs uh, we know that it can be the complication of right heart failure right now this as i said that this can be the case of cardiac insufficiency or uh, i can say the heart failure is happening in this case and the heart failure uh, what uh, what you are actually compromising what your heart is compromising when that uh, it is actually compromising with the cardiac output it is actually comp uh, now cardiac output uh, if you know the definition of that that it is actually the stroke volume uh, multiplied by the heart rate right so what can i say cardiac output is actually uh, going to compromise and your body tissues are going to compromise with the oxygen so they will not be able to get proper amount of oxygen over there so i can say what can be the answer over here so directly they didn't uh, said about the uh, cardiac output but they are saying Uh, like uh, look at the last line what hemodynamic parameter of the heart decomposition is recognized in this case so what can you say that decrease of the minute volume decrease of the minute volume of the heart okay decrease of the minute volume of the heart because you know the definition of cardiac output yes what is the definition of cardiac output cardiac output says that the amount of blood the amount of blood pumped into the aorta per minute that is the cardiac output right so what is the decrease of the minute volume of the heart or you can say decrease of the cardiac output in other words okay or in simple words right so i can simply say over here that decrease of minute volume so which means they are saying that cardiac output will be lesser cardiac output will be lesser in other words they are want to say that right so this is a decrease of the minute volume of the heart why i am saying so because this is the case of cardiac insufficiency circulatory insufficiency this is the case of right sided heart failure right let's move on to the next one now which is the 109 <coughs> now look at this one uh, this 25 year old man was uh, found actually so this 25 year old man uh, was found having failure of the mitral valve 
failure of the mitral valve mitral valve yes this is the av valve one of the av valve over here on the left side of the heart without disturbance of the circulation now what type of immediate adaptive reaction they are asking you what type of immediate adaptive reaction they are asking you so in this case uh, there is the involvement of the myocardial fibers so what i want to say is that the answer over here this is the heterometric first of all now let me explain you what is what do you mean by heterometric and a option is also given which is the homeometric heterometric uh, actually this adaptive reaction follows the rule of heterometric actually follows the rule of this is a very famous law as you already know about that as well that is the frank starling law what is that yes that is frank starling law and what does this law says frank starling law okay so frank starling law is actually on the basis of on the hypothesis of the heterometric adaptive reaction and what does th what does this rule says that the energy of the contraction okay the energy of the contraction of the heart or the ventricle is actually proportional to the initial length of the cardiac muscle fiber isn't it so <coughs> it actually depends on the muscle fiber okay so in simple words i can say that uh, whatever uh, the strength of the contraction of the ventricle is going to be it actually depends on the length of the myocardial fiber okay to the end diastolic volume and you know if i'm talking about the end diastolic volume i want to say about the uh, mitral valve capacity right if the mitral valve is actually failing or mitral valve stenosis or regurgitation or insufficiency is happening with the mitral valve so obviously your left ventricle is going to compromise with the blood volume isn't it and in that case what can i say is that frank starling law is going to disturb so in simple words you should remember is frank starling law is in relation with the heterometric adaptive reaction and heterometric adaptive reaction you can say that it depends on the length of the cardiac muscle fiber here muscle fiber uh, remember about muscle fiber uh, to the end diastolic volume and end diastolic volume yes it depends on the capability of the mitral valve obviously and here you can see uh, clearly that failure of the mitral valve is happening right so this is gonna be heterometric adaptive reaction okay so listen to the explanation explanation again and again till you get cleared okay or you can ask me your doubt in whatsapp or the face or facebook okay so there is one option which is given in a that is the homeometric homeometric adaptive reaction homeometric i already told you about the heterometric what is homeometric now homeometric one is actually a uh, heart's ability to increase contractility and restore the stroke volume whenever afterload increases what do you mean by afterload <coughs> afterload means it depends on the systemic vascular resistance or you can say total peripheral resistance exerted by your blood vessels right so what i'm saying that uh, whatever your heart ability to uh, heart ability to increase the contractility and uh, to restore the stroke volume to re to restore the cardiac output uh, after the whenever the afterload increases right that is the homeometric uh, adaptive reaction okay fine so now let's move on to the next one which is uh, 110 okay so in 110 what they are saying in question number one 110 they are saying that this patient is actually complaining of heart pain this patient is actually complaining of heart pain and uh, that followed a uh, psycho emotional stress and ambulance doctor diagnosed ischemic heart disease of the heart and that is the stenocardia stenocardia is also called as what yes stenocardia is also called as angina stenocardia is also called as angina angina further is having three types stable angina unstable angina and the prince metal angina we have already talked about that in class and what can be the answer what mechanism of ischemia yes uh, we are having the problem in the coronary vessel and that will be getting spasm so answer will be obviously that is the angiospastic right so that will be what angio angiospastic and what problem is gonna persist over here yes you can say that in the angioplast angiospastic there's a problem like this so it's gonna be like this right so here there's gonna be spasm so that is the angiospastic that is the 
angiospastic valve right so now let's move on to the next one okay so that was about the explanation till 110 now let me add image further let me add the image further now okay and now let's look at next one okay okay so here is the continuity of this one 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 yes triple one so they, they were the option remaining options of that 110 question okay so that was the complete question over here they were talking about the stenocardia angina and what is the problem in just plastic we already discussed about that now uh, question number one 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 right triple one so now look at that okay so in the triple one they are saying that uh, the patient uh, ECG findings are given and in this one prolongation of the PQ interval is happening now prolongation of the PQ interval uh, may happen in the AV blocks usually now let's look further than single QRS complexes are dropping out so I might say that uh, they are talking about the AV nodal blockage type 2 okay so or second degree AV block further you will say that increasing quantity of the dropout so you can say that uh, actually uh, this patient is actually worsening and the heart is worsening and uh, AV nodal blockage is actually increasing in this case uh, where the second degree AV block might convert into the third one finally the contraction of the atrium and ventricles became different yes so at this moment over here at this moment I can say that atrium and ventricles are actually contracting independently and that is a very important moment and frequency of atrium you can say that is 70 and frequency of ventricle that is 35 okay so frequency of ventricles actually remain half of it okay so look at the numbers over here that is 70 uh, of the atrium and that is 35 for the ventricles they are actually half of it so atrium is uh, contracting independently and ventricles are contracting independently so they are telling you about which degree heart block that is actually yes you are right that is third degree AV block third degree AV block and this is actually uh, uh, this is actually the dangerous uh, complication of the heart blocks and which kind of uh, <coughs> uh, option might be uh, correct over here so if you will see so that will be the AV blocks right so entry atrial ventricle block so that will be atrioventricular atrioventricular blockage okay that would be atrioventricular blockage and what can i say further atrioventricular in atrioventricular blockage i can say that which kind of which degree i might add over here yes that will be third degree that will be third degree av block third degree av block right so that will be the complete answer of this particular question now let's move further and let's look over the question number 112 112 so in question number 112 they are actually saying that 44 year old patient complains of dyspnea palpitation pain in the right of hypochondrium edema of the legs <coughs> so in this one the patient was having dyspnea that is a shortness of breath palpitation pain in the right hypochondrium and edema on the legs again edema on the legs i told you this can be the sign of right sided heart failure uh, now uh, however move moving further the ecg findings are as follows hypertrophy of both ventricles hypertrophy of both ventricles and the right dextral atrium dextra means yes that is right so uh, hypertrophy of the uh, left and right ventricles and the right atrium right so yes failure of tricuspid failure of tricuspid valve is diagnosed okay so failure of tricuspid valve is diagnosed over here tricuspid valve we very well know that it is actually present in the right side of the heart between the right atrium and the right ventricle if this right if that tricuspid valve is not able to uh, 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 is not able to uh, compete actually or i can say tricuspid regurgitation if it will be happening because failure of tricuspid you can say tricuspid regurgitation or tricuspid insufficiency so backflow of the blood from the right uh, right ventricle into the right atrium will be going and the right atrium from the right atrium it will be backflowing into the superior inferior vena cava and you can uh, see that uh, you know uh, it will be causing further congestion in uh, various kind of organs right so that's why there is the finding of edema on the legs i already told you and i uh, i said already that uh, that can be the case of right-sided heart failure 
right or right sided ventricular failure right ventricular failure right so what can be the answer over here yes obviously that will be cardiac overload due to what increased volume because blood volume is going to increase in the right ventricle but volume is going to increase in the right atrium okay so that is the case over here right so cardiac overload will be uh, increased actually okay because blood volume will, is actually increasing right so now let's move further and we have already discussed about this question in class as well so uh, let's look over the question number 113 so they are saying that examination of 16 year old youth revealed actually acceleration of heartbeats during inspiration and uh, retardation during expiration <coughs> okay so what they are saying that is important over here so they are say, they were saying they were telling you so they were telling you that acceleration of heartbeat during inspiration and retardation during expiration retardation during expiration so findings of ecg are as follows so let's look at the ecg findings further ecg findings they are showing that diminishing of the rr interval diminishing of the rr interval during inspiration and it is prolonging while expiration okay so during the respiration rr interval is getting compromised i can say from this point of view right so what can be the answer arrhythmia is happening due to the respiration because it is actually rr interval is actually getting diminished while inspiration and getting prolongation during expiration so this is a problem while respiration right during inspiration and expiration inspiration expiration so that is the respiration right so respiratory arrhythmia is actually happening in our case so what yes so what will be the answer over here definitely the answer will be respiratory arrhythmia respiratory arrhythmia now let's move on to the next one they are saying that in this particular patient look at the ecg findings if you will look at the ecg findings they are saying that pq pq interval is actually prolonged again pq interval is actually prolonged and qrs complex is qrst complex is missing again so that is the case of av block first of all now av block several options are given over here for an example a option b option and the e option they are actually telling you about the av block now you need to understand which kind of av block they are saying so that can't be the first so e option is actually uh, you can exclude it out uh, okay and then you are remaining with the a and b so which will be the answer incomplete or complete that is actually uh, the incomplete one still because <coughs> in the complete av block the atria and the ventricles they actually contract uh, they actually contract independently okay so few moments ago we have talked about earlier that uh, we have talked about one question that where the atrium and ventricles their rate were actually different from each other right and uh, the ventricular rate uh, was actually uh, remained half as compared to the atrium right so that was the complete av block you can say at that particular moment but in this one that is not the complete av block but now you can still say that yes it is incomplete av block okay so because qrst complex is missing now further it can actually convert into a complete av block if it remains untreated right so what will be the answer over here that will be incomplete av block of third degree okay incomplete av block of third degree and it needs this patient needs the emergency treatment okay now moving further <coughs> question number uh, let's move on to the question number uh, 115 so in the question number 115 they are saying an r after the application of the ring narrowed the aorta okay so ring actually narrowed the aorta of a dog okay so i can say that aortic stenosis might happen further and force and frequency of systole increased because your heart your left ventricle wants to the left ventricle of the uh, dog wants to actually contract uh, more furiously over here because uh, obviously you can uh, see that narrowing of the aorta is happening due to uh, some exogenous influence right that is the ring over here but the volume of circulating blood volume of circulating blood and thickness of the left ventricular did not did not differ from the initial parameter okay obviously because our is there now <coughs> what stage of hypertrophy they are asking you what stage of hypertrophy uh, is it okay so that will be what it is actually the 
uh, emergency situation for this particular dog because uh, the heart of this dog is actually uh, working very hard uh, for meeting the demands of the tissues of this dog but uh, because there is an exogenous aortic stenosis i will say because that is the ring present over here okay so due to the application of that ring uh, you know <coughs> uh, it it actually won't matter it doesn't matter that how many uh, contractions are going on inside the heart of this dog uh, you have to actually remove that ring you have to actually remove that obstruction from the aorta because that uh, is actually not allowing the blood proper amount of blood to go into the tissues right so that is actually the emergency situation for this dog over here okay so that is actually the emergency situation for this dog right so now let's moving further now let's talk about the question number 116 okay so in question number 116 the patient has arterial hypertension <coughs> a patient has <coughs> arterial hypertension okay a patient has arterial hypertension as a consequence of hypertonic so let me add one more slide over here <clears throat> okay <clears throat> Yeah, so as a patient has arterial hypertension as a consequence of hypertonic crisis uh, rather i would say that uh, hypertonic crisis you can actually uh, uh, hypertonic crisis so you can actually write over here hypertonic or you can say hypertensive okay so hypertonic or hypertensive i can say over here so instead of hypertonic uh, you might remember this as hypertensive okay so that can be written as hypertensive crisis okay and in hypertensive crisis yes what is actually happening hypertensive crisis in hypertensive crisis yes actually you can think of very high blood pressure in this case right very high blood pressure in this case so hypertensive crisis and acute heart failure <coughs> okay so what is happening acute heart failure developed due to that now uh, if the acute heart failure uh, developed what is the main mechanism of the heart failure onset in this case so hypertensive crisis always remember this is the problem of the afterload okay so this is the problem of what this is the problem of afterload and afterload means what afterload means uh, uh, look that is a problem of systemic vascular resistance systemic vascular resistance and system vascular resistance can also be called as total peripheral resistance system vascular resistance can also be called as total peripheral resistance okay so <clears throat> uh, what can be the problem over here so if i'm just talking about the after load uh, i should talk about the resistance i'm talking about already about the resistance that is the system vascular resistance total peripheral, peripheral resistance so if the heart failure is happening obviously <clears throat> the cardiac overload will be happening always remember cardiac overload uh, if it is due to preload then it will be due to increased volume for an example in the b option in the b option they are mentioning about cardiac overload due to increased cardiac overload due to increased volume over here okay but in this case you should remember it will be it will be in relation with preload but our problem is hypertensive crisis which is actually happening in the vessel so our problem is with the systemic vascular resistance or total peripheral resistance so this is the problem of the afterload so what will be our answer what will be our answer over here our answer will be cardiac overload due to resistance okay cardiac overload due to resistance because i already told you afterload problem systemic vascular resistance or total peripheral resistance okay i hope that makes sense over here so let's move on to question number 117 now <coughs> okay in question number 117 they are saying reperfusion syndrome let me tell you about the reperfusion syndrome first of all reperfusion syndrome is uh, simply that uh, let's imagine the case of angina where the blood uh, uh, blood supply is actually uh, uh, 
there is not a proper amount of blood supply to the cardiomyocytes and uh, let's say uh, now this person is having a uh, proper treatment is undergoing proper treatment and the uh, let's say this person took nitroglycerin and he's having proper amount of blood supply his cardiomyocytes are getting proper amount of blood supply so that is a reperfusion of those tissues right so that is a reperfusion syndrome so sometimes what happens is some kind of free radical oxidation might happen uh, due to the reperfusion of the tissues right so that is uh, actually happening in this particular case which results in actually uh, damages of cellular membrane and we know that uh, you know uh, uh, free radical oxidation they actually having the tendency to destroy the tissues right so uh, the, here also they are causing the damage of the cellular membranes and the function of the cells they are actually getting compromised excessive accumulation of water and so always remember excess ac accumulation of water and calcium ions might accumulate in excess over here okay so which ions i'm talking about i'm talking about the calcium ions so calcium ions can actually uh, uh, they can actually uh, accumulate over there in excessive amount over there okay if uh, as far as uh, reperfusion syndrome is concerned so what will be our answer over here that will be uh, calcium actually right moving moving on moving for the 118 118 they are saying that a month after reproducing experimental arterial hypertension so they are talking about the arterial hypertension over here and then the thickness of left ventricle of the dog heart becomes 1.7 times bigger that is actually significant right so thickness of left ventricle is actually 1.7 times bigger now further the mass of the heart did not enlarge but minute minute volume rather minute volume normalized what stage of myocardial hypertrophy uh, <coughs> is observed over here okay so <coughs> what is the case over here so in this one <coughs> So they are they are actually mentioning mentioning about uh, hypertrophy, right? So uh, it was experimental arterial hypertension. Thickness of left ventricle, which means was hypertrophy is happening. Thickness thickness is happening 1.7 times bigger. So this is a clear cut clear cut case of the hypertrophy. So that is actually the complete hypertrophy. Okay. So what will be the answer over here? That is the complete hypertrophy. right now let's move for the 119 a 15 year old teenager complains of sensation of sensation of air hunger okay so a sensation of air hunger so this uh, actually uh, this particular teenage is not able to uh, breathe properly further general weakness is there palpitations are there pulse rate 130 and the bp is dropping okay so pulse rate is 130 it is actually high arterial pressure is 100 over 1 100 over 60 it is actually dropping and look at the ecg data over here qrs complex is of normal form amount of p wave and ventricle complex is the same t wave is fused with the p wave so what actually happens is that here if you look at the ecg of this particular patient p wave is actually P wave is actually meeting up with the T wave and then uh, QRS complex will be seen. Look guys, uh, normally what happens is it actually is seen in the atrial uh, paroxysmal tachycardia where the P wave uh, actually where the P wave is fused with the T wave. Okay, so this is the finding which actually goes with atrial paroxysmal tachycardia. Okay, atrial paroxysmal tachycardia but over here they are actually mentioning about the sinus tachycardia sinus tachycardia you can actually understand that yes qrs complexes <coughs> with normal form and amount of p wave and ventricular complexes are the same so there might be the chances that yes this patient will be having the compensatory tachycardia but i think according to me the answer should be going towards the e option this is the atrial paroxysmal tachycardia so according to me i will go with this answer that is the atrial paroxysmal tachycardia where the p waves p waves actually fuses with t waves and one more additional finding you can actually uh, add over here one more additional finding you can add over here as far as atrial paroxysmal tachycardia is concerned i will say that there is absent p wave absent p wave because uh, they are actually having the tendency to meet up with the t wave and this uh, P plus T I will write over here so P P wave is actually meeting up with which wave that is T wave P wave is meeting up with T wave over here okay and that's why they are having the 
hyper acute wave over, over this one okay so according to me uh, i will say that i will go with the e option that is atrial paroxysmal tachycardia but yes uh, p wave is uh, usually absent uh, as well in the cases of atrial paroxysmal tachycardia right moving further let's talk about the question number 120 <coughs> patient demonstrate abrupt arterial pressure patient develops actually what and that is the arterial pressure abrupt it is actually increasing due to changing of the vascular tone what compensatory mechanism provides the increased force of myocardial contraction over here okay so what is actually happening if you will see in this particular question <coughs> abrupt arterial pressure increase due to what changes of the vascular tone okay and what compensatory mechanism provides an increase for some myocardial if you remember i uh, uh, when i was discussing about the homeometric and the heterometric adaptive reaction i told you heterometric heterometric is in relation with the frank starling law where there was the involvement of the myocardial uh, fibers length right here they are not talking about any kind of uh, mitral valve or any kind of valve over here and uh, they are not talking about the diastolic volume in the homeometric discussion in the homeometric one that was heter heterometric where there was involvement of myocardial fiber length to the end diastolic volume right but here in the homeometric one what is the rule uh, what did i said over there that heart's ability to increase the contractility and restore the stroke volume when afterload increases so in this case you can see afterload is increasing okay because look abrupt arterial pressure increase due to changing of the vascular tone so what will be happening compensatory mechanism will be happening compensatory mechanism what will be that it will increase the contractility of the heart to restore the stroke volume right so in this case what will be the answer over here yes in this case the answer will be homeometric homeometric heterometric is also given as the option but they're not mentioning about the mitral valve or something like that right so what is actually the meaning of homeometric is meaning of homeometric is that uh, the contractility of the heart will be increasing whenever the afterload increases whenever the uh, uh, you know the resistance of the system vascular resistance or total peripheral resistance whenever it will be increasing then if the uh, as a compensation your uh, heart contraction rate will be increasing that is the homeometric adaptive reaction right now let's move further question number 121 in the question number 121 they are mentioning about the rheumatic myocarditis and rheumatic myocarditis rheumatic myocarditis actually demonstrate actually symptoms of heart failure <coughs> okay so what is the cause of the systemic circulation disturbance over here okay so how it may lead to that problem <coughs> okay how it may lead to that problem actually uh, what might happen in uh, this one in this particular one in the rheumatism we know that first of all which valve is actually uh, involved that is that is your that is your mitral valve and after the mitral valve there is an involvement of the uh, aortic valve right and usually we are having the endocarditis as a complication of the rheumatic myocarditis okay or rheumatic fever rather so <clears throat> in this one what will be happening symptoms of heart failure and already they are saying rheumatic myocarditis so myocardium is involved over here if the myocardium is involved the damaging of the myocardium is happening the damaging of the myocardium is happening what option i you can think of yes this is the damage of the myocardium right that is actually easy one now let's talk about question number 122 so for that i need to add one more image over here so let's add an image next one yes so question number yeah so it was question number 121 now let's move on to the e option is rising resistance so that is not actually main, making sense over here because they were talking about the rheumatic myocarditis and uh, we are having the damage of the myocardium right okay as a complication <coughs> question number 122 let's talk about that so in the question number 122 what they are saying is 39 year old patient with signs of pulmonary edema and pulmonary edema can be the complication of left sided heart failure or left ventricular failure and yes they are actually mentioning about clear cut that left ventricular heart failure was diagnosed in this case with what aortic stenosis and if there is aortic stenosis proper amount of blood will not be able to 
flow into the aorta from the left ventricle right and there will be the cardiac overload will be happening in this case cardiac overload will be happening but the question is whether it will be due to resistance or whether it will be due to blood i told you two concepts preload and afterload preload will be happening due to the overload of the blood and afterload will be happening due to the overload of the resistance and in this case what is actually happening <coughs> in this case there's a problem of the aortic stenosis so blood vessels okay so blood vessels is actually having the high pressure blood vessel is actually having the high pressure and they need to contract much furiously to overcome that resistance okay so in that case your answer will become yes that will be e option that is a cardiac overload due to increased blood outflow resistance right please remember if they will be talking about the mitral wall or they will be talking about the av wall that will be the problem with the preload if they are if they are mentioning about the aortic aortic wall like simply you should remember av walls involvement then it will be the preload problem if it is involvement of semilunar wall that can be the afterload problem right so now let's move ahead and let's talk about the question number 123 question number 123 is quite easy as you can see over here they are asking you they are telling you about the uh, first of all atherosclerosis 60 year old man quite old and uh, atherosclerosis the blood vessel is happening so excess of which substance uh, plays the leading role over here yes that would be what that would be the bad cholesterol and bad cholesterol over here is given in the d option that is a low density lipoprotein ldl which is the bad cholesterol over here okay so which is what this is the bad cholesterol given okay so this is the bad cholesterol which is ldl right okay moving further question number 124 a serious a serious infectious disease resulted in myocarditis okay <coughs> resulted in what myocarditis serious infectious disease in myocarditis accompanied by damage of the conductive system of heart okay now you already know the conductive system of the heart actually includes the your pacemaker that is a sa node your pace setter that is your av node then your then your bundle of phase and your bundle branches right and then your uh, uh, yes that is a purkinje system so this is actually making up the conductive system of the heart so periodic syncopes due to morgagni adams uh, stroke syndrome so that will be uh, that is actually morgagni adams stroke where the person fa uh, falls into uh, collapse and uh, there can be the involvement of uh, sometimes there can be the involvement of consciousness also some kind of patient they actually lose the consciousness they might lose or they might not lose the consciousness as well so that is the morgagni adams uh, adam syndrome and in this was what is the problem uh, that is the problem with the conduction system and i told you the conduction system is problem is actually happening with the <coughs> problem in the uh, you know uh, conduction between the atrium and ventricle and uh, this is actually a problem of the third degree av block you can say so this blockage uh, av blockage so yes c option is given over here which actually meets our demand so that is a transferring uh, or not actually transferring that should be actually transforming the incomplete av block into the complete one right and this is actually the emergency emergency situation should be must be treated actually must be uh, uh, treated actually very very quickly otherwise the patient might lose uh, might lose the life over here okay now let's move further let's talk about the question number 125 now in the question number 125 they are saying about the failure of the mitral valve yes they are talking about what they are talking about the failure of mitral valve so failure of mitral valve has developed over here and hypertrophy of left heart ventricle what are the main mechanisms of the development of hypertrophy so yes we know that uh, if the mitral valve is getting failure so left ventricle will not be able to uh, actually uh, send much amount of blood because uh, you know already there is the uh, the left ventricle is getting lesser amount of blood right already they are getting lesser amount of blood so in order to do more and more contraction your uh, walls of the heart your walls of the left ventricle will be getting hypertrophied so there will be the hypertrophy of the left heart ventricle so what should be the answer over here okay so they are asking you the what is the main mechanism of the development of hypertrophy okay so that would be what that would be yes you need to uh, <coughs> you need to decrease decrease the intensity of your heart okay so that's how the hypertrophy can actually be reversed right so what the, so uh, yes those they are saying what are the main mechanism of the development of hypertrophy so what are the main mechanism of that <coughs> yes that is the intensity 
okay so degree intensity of the structure functioning which means that which structure they are saying mitral valve they are saying so mitral valve are not able to compete over here they are actually failing right now so your answer will be yes that will be the decrease intensity of structure functioning right